Anthropos here with another exciting episode of You Don't Know. You don't know, huh? So don't act like you do. Because then something bad might happen to you. And I'm talking to you. Thanks for joining me today uh, for another inter interesting episode. We are in the process of revamping our set, making it more amenable, so to speak, uh, for the general populace at large. According to the precepts set forth by the new marketing firm, which is basically Jacob and his wife. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get carried on here. There are uh, a lot of big changes are coming about on the show. One of them is that the name of the show is changing. It hasn't been exactly decided what the what the name of the show is going to be, but it's it's no longer going to be called "You Don't Know," and I'm going to be dressing nicer, you know, so that I can be more appealing to the to the general public. There's going to be less antics, less cussing, less wild stuff, all the stuff that many of you have come to know and appreciate, but yet yeah, was limiting the audience and therefore limiting the message that, I'm, uh, that I've been able to get out thus far. And so that's the reason for these things. We're losing the day glow orange hair color. I know a lot of y'all miss that. Actually, this, you know, hair, <laughs> I didn't set out to color my hair orange, uh, you know, a la Ronald McDonald's. Uh, it just kind of happened that way. I actually colored my hair purple and it was just the deepest darkest purple I think we might have a, a picture of that somewhere and so anyway uh, there's been a lot of changes going on here uh, a lot of things in the air um, I've got a new modeling agency and we had a big photo shoot over here uh, this last weekend it was couldn't have, couldn't have gone any better we had some amazing talent some amazing models some amazing photographers a lighting director, etc., etc., and it was just kick ass. I mean, kick ass. So anyway, yeah, I think we might even have a couple uh, of little clips to show here. Oh, right, run those clips, huh? All right, yeah, check this out. about that and that's some amazing talent right there isn't it huh uh so i feel super blessed to you know be getting this going and uh, of course austin texas very dynamic town it was a uh, 20 2017's boom you know worldwide boom town number one boom town in the world according to uh forbes magazine and yes uh oh i have been working out with my personal trainer um, and she is meaner than a box of rattlesnakes you might not guess it by looking at her picture but yes Francis is very mean indeed and she makes me do things that I don't like like running push-ups all kinds of crazy stuff jumping you know not only do you have to do like squats and stuff like that but you have to like do these jumping squats I mean it's a bunch of bullshit man that's a bunch of bullshit. But anyway, you got to do it, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, what, what, don't we have another clip uh, of our, our new models? Yeah, 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 run, yeah, run that other one. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Ooh, better get a closer look at this. Oh. I 
I'll tell you what, that's a talented model right there for sure. And so we had a great time, man. We're, uh, there was a little bit of booze. Some people were drinking. Most people weren't. There was food. We were eating, networking, you know, meeting all kinds of lovely and interesting people and talented people and uh, dedicated professionals in Austin, Texas on the modeling slash photographer scene and the, and the print scene. Uh, print is what they call modeling when it's like a still picture. You know, you don't call that, you know, some people call it stills, you know, you might call it a picture or something in a magazine, but really what it is is that is print. That's print photography, meaning that it's going on a piece of paper or it's going on a still image somewhere, you know, on the internet or whatever. So you have print and then uh, you have, uh, you know, what we call, might call movies or video or something like that in the, uh, in the movie industry. They call this motion picture. They call it the motion picture industry. Okay, and I, I wouldn't know this except that uh, one of my best friends, uh, who's uh, uh, you know, I might call it FWW, friends with whatever, you know, and uh, very dear person to my heart, uh, who's also a 26-year Hollywood veteran, you know, uh, taught me that amongst other things, um, having to do with you know when we kind of got the first phase of my quote-unquote makeover um, I guess over a year ago and then uh, obviously it's needing revamped and uh, I'm sure she'll be advising me um, within the parameters as set forth by the new marketing team go Jacob go Jacob's wife y'all kick ass ooh wee so um, we're going to have a very interesting time. We're going to have a very interesting guest. Our guest is from Alaska. I'm going to ask him about how those uh, earthquakes went, you know, what, what was going on with that and everything. Our guest is an experiencer. Our guest is a hardcore experiencer and a multi-generational experiencer. And we don't know if in the history of this genre, if there's ever been interviews with generational abductees, experiencers, whatever the fuck you want to call it. All right. But this is one of those cases. So it's a more or less a groundbreaking uh, event in the genre. This person's name is Paul, Paul Reyes, and his mother, Anna Reyes, was on the show about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, and with some very you know, compelling testimony. Some of it got downright scary, you know, it was chilling and everything like this, and uh, Christopher S. Jacobs helped us with that interview. And thank you, Christopher. You did an awesome job. So yeah, from Alaska, we have Paul Reyes. We're going to see what he has to say about all this, uh, you know, ET extraterrestrial stuff, you know, all things like that. Stay tuned because you don't know. You don't know, huh? So don't act like you do. Because then something bad might happen to you. Bah. Hey! Hey, Anthropos here. Ah. With another exciting episode of You Don't Know. You don't know, huh? So don't act like you do. Because then something bad might happen to you. All right. Woo! We're going to check on the status of our guest here in just a moment. He's uh, Some technicians are on their set over there, and they're getting them rounded up. I'm actually, and uh, they're fixing uh, We've got a technician over here, so uh, we're on standby. We'll see you in just a minute, huh? Don't act like you do.
All right, we're going to make that. Go ahead and make that call, okay? We're going to see if uh, we got, we're looking for Paul Reyes. Paul. Hello. Paul, Hello. are you with me? Hello. Hey, how are you Good. doing, man? Good. How about yourself? Awesome, man. Down here in beautiful Austin, Texas. And uh, it's a little bit cold right now, so it's kind of maybe re reminiscent of where <laughs> you are up there in Alaska. Well, do you have a uh, half a foot of snow right now? <laughs> No, I don't. Uh, I don't have that. But Texas wow. cold, man, that bites to the bone. That's that's the thing. I can walk outside in a in shorts and a short sleeve t shirt right now and be fine. Even yeah. in the snow. Yeah. Uh, and that's if an earthquake well, that, that's doesn't true get too. you. Um, yeah, I try to stay away from those. Unfortunately, that that didn't happen this last time. <laughs> Oh, so why don't you relate to the viewers your uh, earthquake experience, if, if you had um, one? My experience with that was, well, it was about 8.26 on the dot in the morning. I uh, got up ahead of my alarm clock, and I decided to set it to save myself 30 minutes, you know, sleep an extra 30 minutes before I have to get up and start my day. So I did that, set my phone on my nightstand, and put my head back down. And as soon as my head touched the pillow, the walls became jello. Everything just, it was, the earth wow. thought it was the sea, and everything went nuts. Um, I think I'm in a good part of town, wow. though, because there was no structural damage, and the only thing that was lost was an artisanal bottle of vinegar. Huh. Hmm. Was anyone killed in the town that no. you live in? Very few injuries. I think maybe a handful, if even, and I don't. I don't believe they're very serious. Uh, there were no deaths, um, and the roads that were destroyed were repaired. All the temporary fixes they were repaired within seventy-two hours. Wow, that's amazing. So it sounds like the infrastructure uh, held up pretty well, as far as like electricity and all that. Um, stuff. It was in some places. It was down for about twenty-four hours or so. Uh, there was a water boil alert in effect for a while um but then that was lifted right. um there was a brief tsunami warning as well but then again that was lifted wow what what's the name of the city anchorage. where you live anchorage. anchorage oh wow that's that's one of the bigger cities in uh, yeah, alaska yeah, isn't definitely. it and it was uh i was i won't god the center was like what more near eagle river i think Eagle River, Wasilla, but yeah, no, I think we're, Anchorage is the largest city here, and it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty intense, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I bet your mom was uh, glad to, you know, get, make contact with you and find out that you weren't injured or, you well, know, or that's missing. Yes, yeah, I'll just say yes, but that's the funny thing is, like, after it happened, I texted her right away, and I was like, Mom, dude, there was an earthquake. It was a really bad earthquake, and I, I didn't hear anything. Wow. Uh, from her for a while until she was like, "Oh shit! I just saw the news. Do, are you okay?" And I'm like, "I, I tried to tell you. Like, I'm not just going to say there's an earthquake for no reason." I laughed about it. I thought it was funny. But... Your mom had tried to warn you ahead of time. No, 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 no. Um, I had tried to let her know that I had just had a been through an earthquake, and she didn't respond until she saw the news. And then she was like, "Oh, you're serious? Oh, okay. There was actually an earthquake." I was like, "Yeah, no, a big one, a really big one." Um, yeah, because uh, it's been shown, you know, to my satisfaction that your your mother is definitely an empath of of some sort. And let so let me oh, yeah. refresh the viewers or kind of let the yeah. let yeah, it's heavy, and uh, tell the viewers what's going on here. Um, this could be uh, one of the very first uh, generational um, interviews with an experiencer in that Paul's. Mother Ann Reyes was on the show about two months ago, and it was a spellbinding show. It was very intense, and also Christopher Jacobs, who's an empath, was involved, and he was giving some of giving his, some of his impressions of uh, Ann's experiences, and the whole thing was just really intense. And so now, Ann has referred me to her son Paul Reyes in Anchorage, Alaska, and here we are, man. Here we are. With I don't have any any background information uh, about you. You've told me off camera that really this is probably the first time that you've actually 
relayed some of these experiences to the public. Yeah, I mean, um, an occasional, you know, friend or so, but, uh, and then my mom, of course, but, yeah, it's it's not not generally something people talk about, I guess. People like to talk about, people like to hear. It's uh, kind of weird. Um, yeah. So... Well, we're, I'm not going to needle you for information, and I know that some of this can maybe be it can like maybe bring up triggers and stuff. And so let's just take it slow. Let's just take it easy. There's no pressure. And where do you want to begin? Um, I guess not really put things in context. Um, so I, I had mentioned uh, previously off camera that originally. I didn't want anything to do with it. No, it made absolutely no sense to me. I actually didn't even know um, the whole deal with space programs, the the idea of, you know, I feel like everybody has a general X-Files idea of aliens, you know. Um, the, it's a military, it's it's green, gray men, it's it's this, it's that, and, and that's just, it's static, like, that's the idea. Anything further than that is, holy, you're crazy. Bird people, what are you talking about? You know, that makes no sense. And uh, that's kind of where I stood with it. And it really wasn't until um, my mom actually gave me the name Max Spears. And I started looking into him. And it was a particular dream that he had, um, that I had something very similar. And that kind of got me uh, started on things. And, and then I started looking more into it and trying to remember more and, and look at old dreams, look at old events that happened and, and really pay attention to it. Um, the dream in particular that I'm talking about, I don't know if you know anything about Max Spears. I know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, I know a lot about Max Spears, but I know as much as anybody. Uh, and I, I, I'm in a, a forum with, uh, with 21 people and I'm the only person in that forum that did not know Max Spears oh, okay. personally. Well, I, I didn't know him personally, so um, um, either. But the thing I'm getting to is there was a particular dream he had had about um, flying, I guess, uh, floating above his house, and I've I've had that. I woke up to breeze it wasn't necessarily cold but it was a breeze and I, I you know got up with the intent of either closing the window which would have made no sense because I never really opened the window or closing the bedroom door and I opened my eyes to see stars a shit ton of stars and it was extremely confusing to say the least and I, I normally lay on my back so if I'm laying on my back and facing this way I had to turn myself which was really awkward and turn and look and I could see my house getting smaller and that didn't really come back until I had heard you know it it said by someone else and it was really um I don't know I kind of became obsessive in my searching for information because I didn't like that I didn't like that at all and I, I didn't want that to be a thing and um the more I looked into it there was more just just more um when i was a child and my mom can attest to this too uh when i was a child young like four or five i was plagued by a series of uh, nightmares and she she would find me hiding in the closet like begging people not to take me basically leave me alone don't touch me please don't take me just crying in the closet and these nightmares were um, the best way I can explain it is a giant movie theater screen with sound waves on it and it's all black and white and there was no, there was no voice. It was these gray bubbles that would just get bigger and then shrink. And as they did that, there was a droning bassy noise and it, it was the most terrifying thing in the entire world. And I, I remember this as a child. I don't remember all the times I'd been in the closet, but I just, I remember freaking out and waking up and running out of the room and screaming and crying because of these nightmares. And I haven't had them probably since middle school, beginning of high school, but they, they were, they were bad. 
Well, you know, the, the that sound, that's around the time when a young man might be reaching puberty or something like that. And so do you think that that has something to do with it, why you quit having these streams? It's, it's possible. Um, it's, it's totally possible. I, I really have no clue why. Um, I'm glad for it, definitely. Um, either way. Oh, yeah. But I, I have no explanation as to why they came on or why they stopped. Okay, do you remember you but you, what the way I hear you saying it is that you still remember some of oh, these Oh, definitely, dreams. vividly. Oh, definitely. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, you know, not many people remember dreams from their Oh, childhood. no, I, I remember I, I have getting out of bed and screaming my head off and running to the door, which was I was always too short, I'm a really short guy. Um yeah, it, wow. no, it's <laughs> yeah. Those are not fun. Okay, uh now what is the reason or what is the context of uh your mother naming you max spears i didn't really understand she that. was wanting me to look into something it was a whole like she would just like look into this like when you have the time check this out look at this thing and um because uh prior to that i had asked her have you ever heard of the mandela effect and she laughed at me and she, she just ha 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 look this up and, you know, I, I went on from there, but that is kind of how that got started. Um, you know, way back in the days, yeah, way back in, gosh, yeah, high school, uh, well, near the end of high school, I got real interested in things like the JFK assassination. Uh, did we really land on the moon? And so I started checking that stuff out. And when the uh, Mandela effect became a thing or really got popular online, um, it kind of triggered me back into wanting to look at things, wanting to, to question stuff because, 